Hey guys, this is the EC Service Tech Channel, and today what we're looking at is how to tell if your TXV may be having a problem or if it's something else. All right, uh, so we're going to give an indication of a bad TXV using low temperature. Uh, we're actually going to be sticking the we're going to be sticking the TXV bulb in a cup of ice water. Okay, presently the ice water is at 33 degrees. All right, so right now the system's running fine. All right. The system's running fine, and we have, it's, it's, it has a TXV because you know there's a TXV bulb here. You can see that this is larger area that has insulation around it, and you can open that up and see the TXV bulb, and there's an external equalization port. So whether this uh, fan coil said TXV installed, or you saw the TXV outside of this, or you saw the lines here coming off the TXV, you would be able to tell that there is a TXV mounted on this, so therefore, you should use uh, the subcooling charging procedure in order to figure out if this has the correct charge. You would not use superheat. Superheat would be used for pistons, orifices, and capillary tubes. All right, that's the only time that you would use uh, a superheat charging process. Okay. So superheat will be if you had a little orifice like that. Okay, and it was inside of a housing with the nut on it. Anyway, we know we have a TXV, so we're going to check the charge in subcooling. All right, we presently have about a 195, about 195 degree uh, psig. If you follow that over, this unit is R22. On the rating plate, it says 15 degrees of subcooling is our target subcooling. So 99 degrees is what it says for R22. If you bring the dial in from 190, what right now it's like 192. PSIG and you, you follow it in over to the green saturated temperature. The saturated temperature is the temperature right here in the middle of the condenser coil. All right, so we've got 99 minus 84. All right, so that's 15 degrees of subcooling. So that, that's telling us that we have the correct charge, okay? So now we're just going to go ahead and play around with this TXV bulb. What we're going to do is we're going to show as if the TXV bulb has lost the refrigerant. If a TXV bulb loses its refrigerant charge, it will not be able to apply force onto the head of the TXV. All right, so here we go. We're going to take this off. We're going to take the TXV bulb out. And we're going to be putting it in ice water. So the ice water, right around 33 degrees. You want to make sure that you do not uh, paint the line coming off the TXV. Remember, it has refrigerant in it at all times. All right, we're going to put that in the ice water, and I want you to watch what happens. All right, the suction side. See how it's dropping? All right, this line is attached to the liquid line. This line is attached to the suction line. Okay. So what we have here is we have the saturated temperature at about 21 degrees saturated presently. All right. What you're going to have with a TXV that has lost its refrigerant charge, you're going to have a little bit higher of a superheat. Okay. If it has lost all of its charge, okay? In this case, we're replicating as if it lost its charge because it can no longer sense the heat on here. Therefore, um, it will not be able to open the TXV. So, in the case of ice water, what's actually happening is the TXV thinks that this, that this line is very, very, very cold, which means that the house must be down to like 40 degrees or something like that, okay? And in that case, the TXV, I mean, I'm making that number up, by the way. But the TXV is thinking that, oh, since it's so cold in the, in the house or the building, we do not need to put that much refrigerant through into the evaporator coil, okay? Just putting this little tiny amount in, just a little tiny amount, all right? So what happens is you have high pressure, high temperature liquid refrigerant coming through and into the TXV, coming out through the TXV, you have just a 
very minuscule amount of liquid. A TXV will never close completely shut on you. It'll only allow just a little bit of refrigerant to flow through. So this little bit of refrigerant becomes an extremely low pressure, low temperature uh, liquid uh, refrigerant, okay? It's liquid refrigerant, 80% liquid, 20% of that's flash gas, okay? Maybe a little bit more is flash gas now because it's, it's very, very low and it does not take much heat to turn that little bit of liquid into a vapor, okay? So you're gonna have a higher superheat because there's less liquid and less saturated state in the evaporator coil, okay? The evaporator coil is right here, all right? You're gonna have less, less um, area of it has liquid in it or in a saturated state where liquid and vapor both exist, okay? So then it has all the rest of this time to turn into a superheated vapor. So yeah, the superheat is going to go higher. All right, so presently we see that we have 20 degrees for R22 uh, in the saturated point right in the evaporator quilt, and our superheat is pretty high. It's 50, 54, okay? So we have about 34 degrees of superheat, all right? Now, at the same time, you're going to notice if the charge is right. Now, if the charge is not right, you, you won't notice this, but if it's at the same time, that if you have less refrigerant on this side of the system, and that means there's more refrigerant on that side of the system, which is the condenser. All right, so let's check to see the subcoin. The subcoin should have gone up. If the superheat, superheat is going up on this side, our subcoin will be higher than 15 degrees on this side, or it should be. All right, because there's less refrigerant over here, so the whole system contains the same amount of refrigerant. Well, where does that refrigerant go when it's not being used in the evaporator coil? It has to be being stored in liquid in this condenser coil. So just say, you know, you had your superheated vapor here, okay, coming out of the compressor, then you had it in its saturated state where both liquid and vapor exist, and then down here was your was your liquid, okay? And then, it, so the temperature decreased from here to where it comes out at, and that was your subcoin, okay? So just say it had, just say it had six passes in the condenser coil left in order to drop the temperature of the liquid refrigerant, all right? Well, now since it's since it's fuller, more full of liquid, say it has eight passes to go. Well, eight passes through this coil is going to um, it's going to make the temperature lower, all right? And that is going to create a higher subcoolant. So let's take a look here: 94, 94 degrees saturated minus 73. Okay, so you have. Let's see here, 20, 21 to 22. 21 to 22 degrees of subcoin, where before you had 15. All right, so that's that's what's happening there. That's why your subcooling is, is higher. All right, so just because when you hook the gauges up and you see that your subcooling is high or your subcooling is correct, it does not necessarily mean that the whole system is okay. You need to still look at the vapor side, all right? If your vapor needle is below 32 degrees, there is a problem, all right? Some of the problems that could exist from a um, below 32 might be an extremely cold house. That house might be at 55 degrees or something like that. If that were the case and that, then that uh, saturated temperature in the middle of the evaporator cool might be on the lower side, okay? But for the most case, it's never that, never that low, all right? So some of the other reasons could be the evaporator coil, all right? has dust on the underside of it, okay? Maybe from somebody never even putting a filter in, all right? It could be a dirty filter. It could be the ductwork has collapsed on itself, either that internal fiberglass duct wrap or maybe a flex duct is collapsing on itself. It's broken down. Um, I said the filter is dirty. Um, or maybe the blower motor speed is not high enough or the blower motor is not working properly or not working at all, okay? If it has a belt on it, which they don't usually when it's uh, five tons or less, but if it's bigger, as a larger unit, larger tonnage unit, it may it may be a belt driven for the fan. You might want to check to make sure that that belt is tight onto the pulleys. All right, there's a, there's several things that you can check there. Okay, so um, in the case of of the blower motor, okay, the blower motor speed is low. The blower motor could be bad you know it could not be working at all okay you could have the ductwork collapsed on itself you could have a dirty underside of the coil you could have a dirty filter 
Okay, you could have undersized ductwork. All right, right there is just six reasons why this could be bad, along with a seventh reason could be the TXV uh, bulb is bad, or an eighth reason where it could be that there is a restriction in the liquid line. Okay, so by knowing and reading your pressure gauges, you can start to figure out what's happening on the system. And then you can go through there through a, a process of elimination in order to figure out what the problem actually is. Okay, in this case, it's obviously a TXV, TXV bulb. But if you check the underside of the coil, you know, that's all good, especially when you, you could add refrigerant to this and nothing's going to happen except for your subcoiling is going to get more. It's going to become more. All right, so if that TXV bulb was bad and it lost its refrigerant charge, all you're going to do, or if it's maybe low on refrigerant or something, it's just going to, you're going to add more subcoiling and this, this temperature in here is not going to rise because right? it's not going to allow more refrigerant into, into the system, okay? Because this side is broken, meaning this side, all right? It's not allowing the refrigerant into the evaporator coil, but all the refrigerant ends up going into the condenser because the condenser is still working okay. All right, well, I hope that helps and, uh, you know, send me any other questions and feedback and stuff and uh, we'll go from there. But I hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.